Today we will learn about how to fine-tune GPT 3.5 Turbo. We will generate a sample math dataset of 1000 multiplication problems up to 4 digit by 4 digit. We will convert these into a fine-tuning dataset in the proper format such as these. We will learn about how we can upload our dataset, how we can list our files from the server, how we can start a fine-tuning job, how we can list our fine-tuning jobs, how we can retrieve a currently running fine-tuning job, how we can cancel a fine-tuning job, how we can retrieve the current live events about a fine-tuning job, and how we can delete a fine-tuned model. When we have fine-tuned our model in our OpenAI Playground, we will be able to see the fine-tunes appear right here, and we will be able to use it right here, as well as making OpenAI calls like this from the API. We will also learn about how we can call and track a job, fine-tuning job, and get its step, train loss and accuracy, print them, uh, write them to a CSV file, and actually create a real-time graph out of it as well while the fine-tuning job is ongoing. Our fine-tuning plot will look something like this. This is the training loss. This is the training accuracy. So let's just get started. First part is to generate some data. Now this data can be anything that is related to the task that you're trying to accomplish, for, but for demonstration purposes, we are going to dynamically generate multiplications. 100 single digit multiplication, 200 double, 300 triple, and 400 quad digit multiplications. All these files will be available at Patreon. Link will be in the description. You can also go to www.echohive.live and search and find all my videos along with their code download links from Patreon. When we run this file, we will generate the problems.csv. As you see, this is 1000 increasingly complex multiplication problems. Our next file, the generate fine tune dataset.py, will actually convert this into the format that our fine tuning job can understand. We will create messages list with a system message. Our system message will remain the same for each data point. We will be creating what is a times B, right? Operand one times operand B, and the assistant will just simply return the result. We will be generating these from the CSV file. Operand one will be the first number, operand two will be the second number, and the result is the uh, what is to the right of the comma, because this is comma delimit uh, delimited. Uh, so this is the multi result of the multiplication problem. When we run this, we create a JSON L format, which is what the fine tuning job ex accepts. And we create 1000 of these uh, JSON objects as the messages list. As you see, the system messages, you are a perfect multiplication calculator. User's content is the co multiplication question. And assistant just returns the result. So we have created this. So now our fine tuning data set is ready. One thing to mention that we are shuffling the data set because when you're fine tuning, it is advisable that you shuffle your data set. Now we are ready to upload our data set and then start our fine tuning job. Now, when you're creating your data set, we've only created a single data set for training of it 1000 items. However, it is recommended that you divide your uh, training files into training and test files. Here we are not going to do this. I'll be doing that in future videos. But the reason you want to divide them into training and test sets is so that while well, during the training, OpenAI will run evaluation against the test set. And it is important when you're running a training job or fine tuning job to be able to compare the performance of the uh, model over the kind of data that it is not seeing because it will be training on the training file and the test uh, items in the test file they will not have seen. So it gives you a better uh, understanding of its accuracy during the training. But like I said, we will only be using a single file in this case. First step is to upload our file. We will be uploading the file using openai.file.create file, and we will be opening the math dataset.json-l with the purpose of fine tune. This has to be defined like this. We will be signing to the upload file, and we will be printing it because we will need the ID number of the file. When we run this in debug mode, we will be able to run this and then see the file printed. There we go. This is the file that we need, and its ID is such. Its purpose is for fine tuning. We need to keep track of this. You can perhaps just create a file name.txt file and save it there for future use if you like. Now I can also print all the files that I've uploaded, openai.file, 
file.list, but this comes back as in no particular order, as you see, and it's confusing to figure out which one you have uploaded first. That's why I recommend printing out the uploaded file and then saving it somewhere so you have access to the file that you have just uploaded. Next up is the start of fine tuning job. I will be calling the fine tuning job plus printing it at the same time. Alternatively, you can assign it to a variable and print it uh, like we have done with the file upload. We will be needing the name of the training file because this is the name of the file in the server. Luckily, we have saved it right here, so we can just copy this, bring it over here, and paste it right here. We are going to be training fine tuning GPT 3.5 Turbo with the suffix math test 2. I have previously created the math test, so I'm just going to name this 2. As soon as we run this, our fine tuning job will start. As you see, this is our object, this is our ID. We need, we're going to need this for later. Uh, and uh, our fine tuning job currently has been created. We're going to be training it for three epochs. I will be copying the ID because I will be needing it to retrieve later. And I'm just going to paste it here. This is our fine tuning ID. Next, we can retrieve a list of fine tuning jobs by OpenAI fine tuning job that list. We, we can set the limit on how many you are looking to return. When I run this, we see that we return several fine tuning jobs. The two that I have done earlier, as you see, they both had succeeded, and the, uh, this current one is currently running. So, this is how you can retrieve a list of fine tuning jobs, past and present. Now we can retrieve the state of a fine tuning job, which is currently running, or a past uh, fine tuning job that had been completed. I'm going to grab the fine tuning job that is currently running. I will paste it right here. And with dot retrieve, when I run this, our fine tuning job has been retrieved. As you see, its status is currently running. We can also cancel a fine tuning job by giving us ID. We won't be doing this, but you can keep that in mind. Like I said, all these files will be available at Patreon for my Patreon supporters to download, along with 100 plus projects. Uh, you can find the link in the description. We can also retrieve uh, events from our current fine tuning job. Of course, we again need to put in the ID. You can set a limit on how many steps you are looking to retrieve. And uh, this will retrieve the process progress of your fine tuning job. If we run this, we get two events so far for this fine tuning job. One is that it had been created, and then another one that fine tuning job started. What we're interested in is this data key, because after the first 100 steps of training has been completed, then we will get the steps number, the training loss number, and the accuracy number under this. If you remember from previous printing that we, our default epochs was set to three, and each epoch is fine-tuning the model for 1,000 steps. Steps are completed and returned in this data key every 100 steps. This is how we are going to be able to keep track of uh, and save our progress into a CSV file and create this plot that we are looking for. If we actually pay attention to this plot, it is drawn every 100 uh, steps. You can also delete the fine tune model just uh, like this. I have the print statements in front of all because then uh, I will get some information printed in the terminal about each and every one of them when I run these lines. Now, next up, is the track underscore fine tune.py. If you remember, we started with generate raw data, which generated our math problems. Second was generate fine tune data set, which converted our data set into a format which the fine tuning job will understand. This had to be .json L format. Then we have this file, which includes all our commands to upload a file to start a fine tuning job and to review the status of those fine tuning jobs to cancel them. Uh, and to delete uh, fine-tuned models. And we have saved all the necessary information just to be able to see what we have uploaded and what jobs we are working with. Now we're going to look at the track fine-tune, which is which we are entering the job ID for. This is the job ID that uh, we're going to be using, which is currently running. We created a data frame. We're using pandas. Using, we're going to have the steps column, loss column, and accuracy. And we're just going to start a loop until uh, it doesn't run anymore. 
I actually haven't put a break condition over here, uh, which might be necessary. But anyway, this will get the job done. We say our job is open AI, fine tune job, list events, right? This is what we have used earlier. And we are giving it the job ID, which we are defining right here. And we are just limiting this to one because we just want to see the latest update. And we are just simply printing the job. This is for information purposes. I can just comment this out. And we are looking for the jobs uh, data element, uh, zeroth element of that, and the data key under that. Because if you look at our object, we have this general object, and under data, we have this list. It's first, we are interested in its first element, and we are interested in the data key under that. That is why we are looking for this, and we are checking if it has some information. If we say if, this then that means that the when this is not null because until the first 100 steps are completed data will be null and we won't enter this condition however if we do return some data which once we print it we will see then we will retrieve its step training loss and train mean token accuracy let's actually run this in um, debug mode and see what's happening so we are at this line, we have paused executing, but as you see, we have printed the last uh, object, last job, which was this item. Uh, as you see, we have now data because our first 100 steps were completed. It's training loss is currently at 0 0.7. It's train mean token accuracy at 0 0.8. That's why right here, we will be assigning the step, the data's step key and then train loss and train mean token accuracy as you can see right here and then we will be printing it to the terminal just like this and then we will be appending all this information to our data frame and then we will be writing to our uh, csv file uh, as you see now we are keeping track of the progress after which time we are actually creating a, a plot uh, this plot actually each each time we check this is going to create a new plot uh, so if you didn't want to see that feel free to completely comment these out so that you can actually draw the plot at the end from the csv file but as it currently uh, as it currently works it will draw this and it will keep drawing a new window for every uh, at every opportunity it gets and we are doing we are sleeping for 30 seconds before we are checking again so uh, with this uh, training job as i have done before uh, is going to take 10 to 20 minutes some time have passed and we have our second graph which is drawn up to 200 and we have printed the next loss as you see so while we're waiting, I would like to again mention Echo Hive AI Academy. Actually, here, if you search for fine tuning, you can find the previous video I made on fine tuning. This was how fine tuning with GPT-3 works. You can also find all my videos at Echo Hive AI Academy, including my latest project, one of my latest projects, Auto AGI. And you can take a look at their descriptions and you can find the code download links at Patreon. My Patreon includes 136 exclusive posts, uh, including how to uh, lang chain, auto lang chain coder, um, function calling deep dive, auto AGI code review, and the auto AGI code itself. And I also, I also have regular office hours for Patreon supporters. The higher tier you are, the more time you get to spend talking with me. I post the uh, schedule links over here. Uh, when it's available and I post the last times that I was online. If you do end up uh, becoming a supporter, you'll get uh, to access to all my project's code files. And uh, thank you for your support. Uh, let's take a look at this and where we are at. Uh, as you see, we are on, we have fin finished 300 steps and our training loss and training accuracy is updated. And we are continuing to write each step to our CSV files for future review. As I have said earlier, once this uh, fine tune stops training, you will be able to see it in your playground. And if you click on that and view code, you'll also see its name and how to call it. This was my previous uh, version. And when this new one stops training, its name is going to be Math Test 2. Uh, you just 
call it like you would uh, normally uh, 3.5 turbo or gpt4 except you just have to enter your fine tune name now uh, here we go we just finished uh, 500 training uh, steps of training i believe yes and we are continuing the printed along with write, uh, writing it to our training progress csv file so this is it i'm not going to wait till this uh, print job uh, fine tune job finishes uh, I'm actually going to stop tracking it, but the fine tuning job actually continues as long as you have the ID, fine tuning ID, you can always connect to it using the track fine tune as long as your ID is accurate. All these files uh, you can have access to at my Patreon. And uh, this is about it. Uh, the few things that, that we didn't take care of is actually splitting the data set into training uh, and test sets. But if you did uh, create it, you would enter it as the training file as such. And then the test file, you would, of course, have to uh, upload the test file separately as well. For example, you can name it as math dataset training. Uh, you would have to, of course, uh, create, the, create it in a file. And then you can upload another one that's called test. And you would have to insert it over here. When you do put in a training and a test file, then OpenAI will automatically keep automatically keep track of both, keep track of the steps, training loss, and mean accuracy for both files. So you would just have to pay attention to that and modify the code if you want to keep track of uh, both uh, updates. Well, thank you for watching, and uh, see you in the next video.